Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. <laughs> For the newcomers, Didi and Roman, walking the beach and talking about Bitcoin, blockchain and life today again, together with my wife, and she is my top as well. Can you test the mic? Yay! <laughs> one, two, one, two. Yeah, one, two, one, two. <laughs> testing, Make some testing. ASMR sounds, guys. In today's <laughs> video, of course, four amazing bitcoin jars one is really important haven't shown that one before you need to see it of course telling you again to zoom out but there is one jar that really tells you what is going to happen on the short term as well guys now also of course a trading tip a travel tips and live advice a beautiful travel tip of Romana too of course and yes the news for today is massive news and i really need to discuss that so watch the video till the end and start by giving it a thumbs up already now because we need to have more thumbs ups and more subs so you need to subscribe and share this video already now before i start talking even more yes do that now let's quickly jump into the charts bam I lost my internet connection today, guys, so I can't show you any short-term charts at the moment, uh, but I do want to show you a couple of very important charts. This one is the first one. This one is the federal interest payments in billions of dollars quarterly. As you can see, all the way to 2019, it was still a decent normal amount. From 2019, we went from 500 billions of dollars quarterly to now 3,250 billion dollars per quarterly in interest that needs to be paid by the federal government of the United States. To be able for them to pay this, they need to start printing even more money, which will lead to even more inflation, which will lead to you being even more poor than you already are. Your purchasing power is gonna drop massively when that printer starts to print again. That is the reason why you should be in Bitcoin. It is not possible to print more Bitcoin. We know exactly that the last Bitcoin will be mined in 2140 and it will take all the way till there that every day a little bit of Bitcoin come new to the market. And from the halving in April 2024, there will be 50% of the Bitcoins that are coming to the market at the moment that will lead to a massive supply shock because more and more people start to understand that this is impossible to maintain by the governments. And that is why even the rich people now start to hedge their capital into Bitcoin, a safe store of value through a spot ETF, a Bitcoin spot ETF, protecting their capital against that inflation being created by their governments. You need to get in now. In this chart, you can see the same thing, the global liquidity M2 versus the Bitcoin price. Every time when more money is being printed, when there is more money on the world, we can see these massive bull runs. Now again, when the money printer started to print, the Bitcoin price started to go up. This is already the proof of what I just told you. The moment the money is being printed, it will be distributed to the 1% rich people, companies of the world, that then again should be distributing it to their employees, but that is not what they do. They are hedging that capital and safe store of values like Bitcoin. That is how they protect their capital. They are automating work, so there's less employees needed because of AI and everything else, and all the funds that they should be distributing to the people is now getting stuck again in the gold of the 21st century, Bitcoin. Very simple to understand. And if you see this chart, then you understand that the halving in 2024 is a very important moment. Before the halving, we had that red area. After the halving, we have that green area. Every candle is three months on this chart. We are almost at the end of this red area, halving in April 2024. From that moment, you will see at least four or five very bullish green candles. I'm talking about three monthly candles. That's 15 to 18 months of bullishness all the way up into 2025. This is still a perfect moment to dollar cost average into Bitcoin at the prices around 40,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. On this chart, guys, you can see exactly the reason why you should sell your house still and go all into Bitcoin. Because if you look onto this chart, you can see the red line. 
that is the house price expressed in Bitcoin. And you can see the blue line that is the house price expressed in US dollars or UK pounds for this one. So if we see in pounds, a house that was used to cost 200,000 pounds in 2016 will cost you at the moment almost 300,000 pounds in 2023. If we look now in Bitcoin, that same house before 2016 costed around 800 Bitcoins. At the moment, that same house will cost you around seven to eight Bitcoins. It's exactly the opposite. If you store your capital in Bitcoin, you will be able to buy more and more houses in the future. If you store your capital in dollars, you will be able to buy less and less houses in the future. If you even want to buy a house, of course, you can also talk about groceries or other smaller stuff if you buy just a little bit less Bitcoin than going all in. I was doing something wrong. <laughs> Again, cut. This is going to take me a long time today because of this. No, um, we are back, guys. I hope you really enjoyed those charts. Of course, zooming out, always on the charts. Also that housing charge, of course, referring to our own step that we took. We sold our house in 2017 for how many Bitcoins was it? Around 300. Yeah, it was oh, what do you mean? No, it was 300k, so yeah, it was yeah. like 100, 100. 100 bitcoins. At the moment, you would be able to buy Way that house less. back, I think, for maybe 10 bitcoins. If we calculate inflation, the housing prices going up or something. Yeah, I think you would pay like 400k for the house now. So from 100 bitcoins to 10 bitcoins. That is showing you why you should be in bitcoin. Because everything gets cheaper, yes? Or maybe it's stupid to say again. <laughs> No, say it. But 300k, yeah. we got 100 Bitcoin. Yeah. And now it's like 400k and we get like 10 Bitcoin. Yeah. Short version. That's the short version. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Did you see that? She didn't even pay attention to the handsome guy, the like the muscled guy. You never do. By. You <laughs> always look do. at girls, but the other way around. <laughs> I don't care. Who's do sad? you guys also have that problem at home? That your wife always tells you, don't look at those girls. And then don't, the don't, don't break your neck, you know, like this. this. <laughs> <laughs> don't then, like it. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't do that. Now, uh, that was a chance. <laughs> yes, fun video again. Let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip today, guys, has to do also with the news that I'm going to talk later in this video about. Because there's news from Spain I really don't like. But that is why I'm going to share this trading tip with you. And it's two trading tips today. The first one is start to trade on decentralized exchanges as soon as possible. Yes, I fully trust Bybit. Yes, Bybit is still my number one centralized exchange. I fully trust them because I know how they are structured and they are not like obeying to all those uh, government rules and all that shit and tax rules. So they will not tell any government how much Bitcoins I make and everything. But still, the risk is always there. In a decentralized exchange, that is completely different because your Bitcoins are on your own anonymous hardware wallet. They don't know who you are. They only know that you own a part of Bitcoins or Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency. But that's a registered amount of those cryptocurrencies on a wallet and that wallet is not attached to your name. That's why it's decentralized. So nobody can prove you own those cryptocurrencies. On a centralized exchange, you need to do KYC. So you tell them, here is my name, this is my passport, this is my address, and here I'm sending you my Bitcoins. Two different ways. Decentralized, unconfiscatable, way more safe. This bull run, still centralized exchanges like Bybit, but the next bull run, guys, be prepared. Because the news that I'm gonna share with you later in this video is going to affect all your holdings on those centralized exchanges. So that is a trading tip, one for today. The second trading tip for today is, I don't know if you still remember, but we two, the two of us, we were walking on this beautiful riff in Spain near her mother on the mountains. And at that time, that was already in 2020, I told you guys, there is this new project, Chainlink and Polkadot at that time as well. But Chainlink, I told you to buy. But Chainlink was at that moment between $1 and $5, like going up and down. And I told you to accumulate a shitload of Chainlink. A lot of you did. A lot of you made a shitload of profit because Chainlink went all the way up to $60 in that next bull run. Now, after that bull market in 2021, we had a bear market and Chainlink fell all the way down to $5 to $8. 
And that was in 2023. I think from March all the way till September, I told you to buy Chainlink because we were between three and five dollar and I expected it to go up massively in this bull market. I don't know if you saw the news today, but today, what? The bird. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry. There is a bird. Wait, guys, look. No, it's a beautiful I'm gonna, bird. Yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> bird on the beach. So, yeah, the video get now a different uh, dynamic, but there is a bird on the beach. Let's, let's run for the bird. No, leave him. Oh, oh I leave the bird Her. <laughs> But Chainlink reached $19 today. That's almost times five if you bought at $4, times four if you bought at $5. That's a big profit. And to go to $60, pretty easy. I believe Chainlink will even reach above 100 US dollar per Chainlink this bull market. So trading tip two, buy some Chainlink. I'm filming the bird from close. Can, can, you, can you tell them what kind of bird this is? No. You don't know. It's a, a swimming bird because of his uh, paws. Sw How do you say it? It's a swimming bird. You know, see the feet? Flip, 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 flip. Can someone comment down below what kind of bird it is? We are trying to walk up to him, but he's walking away all the time. Yeah, he's scared of you. No, he's not scared of me. Come. No, animals love you. Sit on me. He's see gone. how big? No, that's a beautiful shot uh, for uh, Discovery Channel now. <laughs> Different style. Animal planet. Animal planet. <laughs> yes. And maybe there on the back, there's another bird coming, and that is a bird with some... Birdie. Booty. <laughs> <laughs>the travel tip for today, guys, I will leave it up to Romain. The travel tip for today, I want to ask you, what is the best tip or advice that you can give our followers after the first eight years of traveling now? Okay, um, okay. this one is personal and I think more people are the way I am like that. <laughs> I used to be very structured. So uh, Didi is like changing a lot every time. He has a lot of ideas. So I learned to be more <laughs> flexible. <laughs> Do I have a and, lot of ideas? Yeah, and many are like, nah, shit. <laughs> and some of them work. <laughs> yeah, booties for the girls. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> thanks for the interruption. Yeah, that you did the same <laughs> with the bird. That was my bird. Okay, different kind of bird, but okay. okay. But that's I your tip. I will allow it. Uh, no, but my trading tip, it makes it way more easier for yourself if you are flexible. It's not always easy if you aren't. It's not that I'm that, not that flexible, but... Oh, you weren't that flexible. In the beginning, you were like really structured when we started traveling. No, I, like... I lo love to know what up front, what would happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Structured. <laughs> With Didi, it's not possible. It's impossible. No, I live, I live a real unstructured life. But and, that's and, uh, also the way you, um, how do you say it? I don't know. Get the best adventure, learn the ah, most Ah, okay, stuff. yeah, like that, yeah. Um, so for me, I always say yes to certain things while maybe I should sleep one night. Um, and then sometimes you get into strange situations and adventures. On the other hand, if I would not have Romain that every, sometimes says, nah, maybe not, then maybe it would be also a really bad <laughs> adventure. So I think it's a beautiful balance. And I think the last eight years, you really got way more flexible than, um, yeah, than before because we lived a very structured life in the Netherlands. Yeah. My arm, I'm going to switch it again. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, a place where you need to live more structured because it, everything is structured. <laughs> yeah. Sally. But um, yeah, that's my tip. It makes it way more easier for your own life if you are more flexible in it and yeah. So just accept everything for what it is and just not go with the flow. Not everything. Like you just <laughs> but not everything. <laughs> she already knows where I'm gonna take this. Uh. I have an idea. <laughs> Do you see the bushes and the swing over there? I'm not looking. Just be flexible. Look how beautiful just be flexible. <laughs> A pretty okay. dog. Uh, thank you. A bird, a dog. <laughs> no attention to me, just to Teddy. But uh, that is, uh, that's what I learned as well from her because of her uh, little gay dog. Uh, yeah, I need to become a little bit flexible as well. More flexible than I even was because of the dog. But that is a very beautiful travel advice, darling. Okay. Love you. Love you too. Do you have something else to say? <laughs> no. Um, are you a horse now? <laughs> <laughs> Sounded a bit like it. Is yes. that role play? 
Oh my god. No, yes. I have nothing else to add. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> to answer a question of one of the followers, we are going to take the question somebody asked in yesterday's video, I think, or the day before, I don't know exactly, but it was, can you give me a, a few security tips about traveling and storing your cryptocurrencies on hardware wallets, software wallets, etc. And while we're doing so, we're going to turn around and walk the other side. And then you should have switched, but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> oh my God. Um, so the tip for today is, whatever it is, always diversify your portfolio. Hold a part on your hardware wallets, Hold a part on your self-custodial software wallets on your telephone. Hold a part on the exchanges. It's very simple. And if you're very smart, then you can even memorize a seed phrase and you can even hold a part in your brain. So you diversify that whatever happens, you always have uh, different locations and different situations where you store your cryptos. It's a very difficult subject because we can't give away our secrets because it's like a little bit privacy. But the most important thing is you just diversify store cryptocurrency on different ways or in different ways i think that's just the best advice that i can give you if you're traveling don't be afraid they are not going to check your telephone they're not going to check your bags or ledger or any other storage device that's like we are not there yet it's coming closer and closer and closer that's also what i'm going to talk about in the news later <laughs> but for now it's not there yet just be be chill what is there yet but only in a few countries. Yes, they are in a few countries. Don't go to those countries. <laughs> so, so. Don't go to no, New Zealand no, and, or the United States. And you know, um, <laughs> yeah, um, educate yourself. Yeah. That's and, one thing. Uh, you need to take care of yourself. Don't depend on others on that one. Yeah. And I think a second or a third um, um, tip could be if you diversify onto different hardware wallets or different software wallets, try to use as much as possible multi-sig wallets. And I'm talking not only about like multi-sig in that you need a password and that you need a fingerprint and that you need, for example, um, the authenticator, but also, for example, splitting the seed phrases into four pieces, for example. Let's say you have a Bitcoin wallet. Let's say that you have a Bitcoin wallet and the seed phrase of that one is 24 words. Now, you could split those 24 words up in four pieces of six words. And you can hide every piece in a different location, online or offline. If you want to play very safe, you go to four different notaries in four different countries. You store six words in Spain at a notary, six words in the Netherlands at a notary, six words in Portugal and six words in Thailand, for example, at a notary. Then you have four different notaries that have access to only one quarter of the part of the seed phrase. So that is the most safest way. But you can also do this online. You know, there is many other ways, but like Romain already said, you need to do your own research. You really need to educate yourself. Everything is changing really fast. New things are coming. Yeah. They are... There is now even, I think, custodial services that like split the seed phrase or that they want three separate signatures or three wallets to sign a transaction for Ethereum-based that is Gnosis safe. I think they are uh, rebranded to SAFE or now or something. It used to call uh, Gnosis SAFE. Uh, we have uh, our Ethereum there as well. So if I would want to send the Ethereum, there's three different wallets that, of which two wallets need to sign the transaction. And then the Ethereum can be transacted. So there's a lot of ways to make it way safer. Um, I am going to make a course about this, of course, also in the Bitcoin Family VIP group. The course uh, system went live yesterday. I gave access to the first 100 VIPs today. The second 100 VIPs are getting live to the first two simple basic courses. One about the indicators, one about Telegram, how to set it up and be safe and everything. And yes, I'm also going to do safety courses about hardware wallet and everything else. Look, that guy is always walking. One, two, three, four, five, six dogs or something here on the beach. Like, I think he's a dog lover. Maybe he wants steady. No. So, no. <laughs> so that was the answer to the question. The news for today, guys, is about Spain. And I really don't like the news. And her parents are living in Spain and are need to pay tax in Spain. But Spain has made a new law. And that new law makes it possible for the treasury and the government 
to confiscate crypto if people have tax debt. So let's say you have tax debt and you were lucky to buy Bitcoin like 10 years ago or were gifted Bitcoin, but you can't pay your tax debt at the moment because you don't have a job, because the government locked down the country for two years and all that shit. So you lost your job, you lost your income, you can't pay your taxes. The only thing you have left is your pension, your crypto that you bought as a pension. And now they made the law that they will be able to confiscate those cryptos from you. So they are forcing the Spanish people, the exchanges and everyone to tell them exactly how much crypto they have. Spanish people have to the end of March to tell their government how much crypto they own. Because if they don't do that, and in the future they will find out, you will be fined and punished for that. So Spain, not a crypto friendly country if you ask to me. But we wanted to go to Spain this summer. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, we don't how? need to pay tax there. No, I know, not for us, for the other people who live in Spain. Yeah. Um, how are they going to find out if you don't tell them? Because most people in Spain, when they register at a Spanish exchange yeah. to buy Bitcoin, yeah. they do to the uh, verifications. They need to hand in their passport, a proof of address. They need to tell the exchange exactly who they are. And the Spanish government is now going to tell the exchange, hey, this person has an account at your place. We still need to receive like $10,000 worth of tax, block that $10,000 on the exchange and send it to us, for example. Yeah, but there's a way around it. Yeah, you need to trade on decentralized exchanges that are not registered in Spain. So to all the Spanish people, <laughs> amigos, como esta? No trade on a Spanish exchange. <laughs> you should trade on a decentralized exchange. Take your Bitcoins into a hardware wallet, the secure setup that we just talked about, Connect it with Apex Pro, for example, a decentralized exchange, and do all your trading over there. You can exchange Bitcoin or Ethereum into USDC and vice versa. Very simple. It can almost work the same as you are used on a centralized exchange like Bybit or Binance. A decentralized exchange nowadays, like Apex Pro, are almost the same user experience. But that's the only way that you can keep all those scripts in that you already have hidden for those that don't, you don't want to see them. Keep them hidden. Keep them on your hardware wallet in an anonymous way and connect only to decentralized exchanges to trade. Then it will be way more difficult for the government and the treasury to come and confiscate your Bitcoins. So we lost sadly all the Bitcoins in the boating accident. She, yeah, she, she dropped the ledger. Oh, I did it. Yeah, I still hate you for <laughs> dropping the ledger. It wasn't me. Yeah, so we are walking the beach and making a lot of social media nowadays to earn a little bit back. <laughs> and we are not succeeding because you're not like sharing this video with everyone out there because we don't have even 100k subscribers. <clears throat> like, do you, what, what do you have to say? Why don't we have 100k subscribers and all those other ones that are really bad in my honest opinion do have 100k subscribers? You can buy. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy. <laughs> That goes against all my norms and values. I won't buy subscribers. Wow, well, then it will take longer. longer. Or maybe you should show me more. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, off the limit, off the limit. Can you just run in slow motion? I don't know if it will make people that happy. <laughs> I think it will make people happy long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so but that's the news for today, guys. Spain crossing that one off my residency list, of course. So that's my honest opinion, but let me know what your opinion is about that because I know that a lot of you are saying now, but you do need to pay tax, then comment it down below. Why do you think we need to pay tax? Why do we need to pay so much tax? On cryptocurrency, especially. Okay, let me know down below. Let's <laughs> jump into the next part. Which brings us already to the end of the video, which mostly is the inspirational part, as we call it. And that part today is about a very simple mindset that you can use to become a little bit more positive in life. If you look in the mirror and you see yourself, you can see a person standing there that's a combination of everything you ever learned, have eaten, have smelled, have thought, people told you, you experienced, all that together made that person that is now you. 
So if you want that you to be a very positive person, you just need to make sure that all your experiences and activities you're doing from today on are positive. Because then you can only reflect back to all those positive memories and all those positive activities that you're doing that then again will contribute to the new you. That's how simple it is. In my honest opinion, if you keep going downwards in that downward spiral, negative, 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 that will form you as a very negative person. The more you do positive things, the more you will become a positive person. You are the combination of everything you have smelled, you have eaten, you have experienced, you have seen, you know, uh, you have not seen everything. All the opinions of other people about you, all the conversations with other people, that's forming you as a person. So if you want to make that more positive, just make sure you focus on more positivity in your life. Um, do you agree with this or what is your opinion about this? You're asking me or the, the followers? You. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it all starts with you. So that's where you can make the change. Yeah, I think that's... I agree. Yeah, it all starts with you. Like, it's not like, it's not about what other people think of you because that's the thing that you need to ignore. All that negativity that you have in your life, you just ignore it. You just yeah, there start are to people focus. that like what you are doing. There are people who envy you what you are doing. There are people who, you know. What is your experience in the last eight years of us being all in and doing this and becoming financially pretty independent, let's say like that, about other people's opinion and about us? Did, did, did you experience a lot of envy or did, you, did we experience, how do you feel about this? Um, well, I'm a more, um, <laughs> I'm not anti-social, social, but yeah. I keep it more to myself, so I don't really... It's not that I don't care, but it's more that I just look at myself and my family and that's it. Yeah. So, but still, yeah, yeah, you know, people get jealous, get envy, they support you, there are so many different kinds of people and that's fine. Please be there, all different kinds of people. Yeah, because it would be a really boring world. <laughs> But I do need to agree with the saying, what everyone always says, the moment you get more successful and you have a bigger capital, that is also the moment when you will lose a lot of friends because uh, they just can't live um, with that envy that they have inside of them. They just get mad and all the stuff and they just take a distance. They just start to focus on other friendships, I think. But it's my honest opinion. And there's only a few hardcore friends that you will uh, always uh, keep in the end, I think. That's also why we always tell the kids, you know, if you travel, people always tell us, yeah, but they don't go to school, they don't make friends, they build me back. I always tell our kids, you know, of all the friends I made on school, on the primary school and all the other schools, um, maybe one or two friends I still am in contact with. Most of the friends you make after that in life, during your job, during your teen years that you're like going out and all that stuff, that's when you meet your best friends, I think not on the schools. It is good for social context, but not to create like long lasting friends. One or two. Do you still have friends from your like primary school like that you really have contact with? No. No, no same I don't. for me. But um, it's also because um, you grow, you change, you need other kind of people around you where you can learn from. So you move on, they move on. Yeah, and of course we travel. So it's like different connections. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that was, uh, I think, everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, then give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about everything that we thought about, about the charts, the tips, and of course, also about the live advice, and of course, also about this new style of video sometimes with my beautiful wifey, wifey, wifey. Zoom into my wifey. That one. Let me know down below. I wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam. Bam.